morning good afternoon good evening participants uh, from all over the world we are go going to continue multi cloud for you series on microsoft fabric and today we are going to have session 2 on deep drive with microsoft fabric so for the resource person of the day is uh, ashraf ali he is a principal program manager at microsoft so this is uh, about who we are and what we are we are fifth ir we stand for fifth industrial revolution and we have over hundred and thousands of strong community of technologists from all over the world we deal with technical systems consultation and projects on multi-cloud strategy data science and a blockchain and a stream engineering this infographic show you how we are growing we have offered thousand plus sessions through our platform and we have 300 plus speakers associated with our platform and we have 27 thousand plus members associated with our platform and these are the few MEPs and the master members of our platform we are academic partner of alibaba cloud and these are the few courses which we have done in line with alibaba cloud how we can help you we can help you in to build your knowledge with the persons and help you in order ways when you are looking for jobs for our community and as a part of our community, we are going to provide free level one certificate for all the participants and you can access the same by using the secret code which will be provided at the end of the session. And this is a certificate which you can access and you can share the certificate in the, in the social media platform. So now without any ado, I am going to pass the session towards uh, Arshadari. All right, thanks a lot, Gawaskar. Give me a moment, please. Let me share my screen and then we can get started. Yes. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, Gawaskar. Um, I think you have covered pretty much um, um, the introductory part. So let me directly jump into this. Uh, my name is Arsad Ali. I'm a principal program manager at Microsoft, and I welcome you all uh, to this session, the second session on Microsoft Fabric. Uh, we had another session earlier, a couple of weeks back, about um, uh, an introduction to Microsoft Fabric. So, if you have not watched that session, I would suggest you to kind of go back and um, uh, kind of listen in that session uh, to get in, um, understanding of what Microsoft Fabric is. This is going to be a more like deep dive session, and we'll focus mainly uh, on data engineering side. So just to recap what we had uh, discussed in our previous um, uh, call, Microsoft Fabric is a brand new product uh, built from ground up for this era of generative AI or this era of um, uh, AI. This is an unified platform to build analytic solution end to end. There are four core pro uh, principles for uh, Microsoft Fabric. And the first one is completeness. It provides all the capabilities that you need to build your end to end analytic solution, all the way from data integration with data factory to data processing or data engineering with uh, uh, Apache Spark or, or um, uh, MPP engine like um, uh, Data Warehouse to serving data with Power BI. So all these capabilities are provided natively in Microsoft Fabric and they are all natively integrated. So you as a developer, or you as an engineer, you focus more on building the uh, uh, building and creating the business value for your organization than worrying about how to integrate different pieces. So that's about the completeness of the platform. The second pillar is it's open and it, 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 it has a standardization on uh, open source Delta Lake format. So basically the, the idea here is every data that you store in Fabric that gets stored as a Delta Parquet file and the, the same copy of the data is can be accessed across all the engines that we have in Fabric. So if you, if you take an example of landing data with Data Factory, uh, you can land that data as, as a Delta table and the same copy of the data without kind of making any duplication of the data, you can access that same copy of the data from um, 
spark or you can use that um, uh, uh, or refer that data from data warehouse so basically the idea here is it's open at every layer and there is no proprietary um, lock in here uh, unlike uh, any other databases that you can think of um, they they get stored into dbms format or mdf or ldf format here it's everything is stored as a parquet file so it's accessible across all the engines in fabric as well as it has it it, it 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 is built on that open format of parquet it means like any other engine outside fabric can also be able to access and, and consume it so that's uh, that's the second pillar with the third pillar the idea here is to empower business user uh, in microsoft 365 experience so for example if you have a power bi report you can share that power bi report uh, interactively in teams or powerpoint uh, and and so on and so forth. And the fourth one is um, the native integration of all this workload with Copilot to accelerate your productivity and to discover insights. So these are the four core pillars for Microsoft Fabric. Now, what we are going to do in this session is going to focus on one of this workload, the, the, the different workloads that we have at the top of this screen. We're going to focus today on one of the workload for data engineering. So with data engineering, the idea here is to empower all the data engineers to transform data at a scale and build a lake house based architecture. And there are four capabilities that we provide as part of this uh, workload and, and, and the experience that we have. The very first one is building a lake house for all your organizational data. So in, in uh, my earlier session, we talked about the concept of one lake and one copy. Uh, I have briefly touched upon uh, earlier today also that like every data that you stored in Fabric, it's just one copy of the data and that can be accessed ex across all the engines. And that is being enabled by allowing you to create a lake house for all your organizational data. So that's one of the core capabilities here in uh, data engineering workload. The second one is the availability of Apache Spark runtime, and that has been optimized to provide the great out of box performance and robust admin control in, in um, uh, Fabric. And we'll, we'll touch upon uh, some of them uh, in, in, in today's discussion. And the third capabilities that we have is delightful and immersive authoring experience uh, with your tool of choice. So if you like browser-based experience, we have Notebook. If you if you want to use uh, local ID like VS Code, you have VS Code integration to author your notebook and, and work with data engineering workload. And finally, all these capabilities are natively integrated into Fabric Foundation uh, that we have been talking about. So this these are the four core capabilities that we have in data engineering. Now, just to deeper dive into this one um, for storing the data with data lake. So when we talk about lake house, right? So when uh, many of you might have already kind of experienced working on different system and creating lake house, the idea here is very similar in nature, right? So with lake house, it allows you to store and, and manage all your data at a single location and that can be shared across your uh, uh, enterprise. It, it, and, and what does it happens also is like when you create a lake house, by default, a SQL endpoint gets created. So it means like any data that you stored in the lake house, if you are storing it as a Delta Parquet, um, that data can be accessed using SQL endpoint by writing SQL queries. And we'll look at some of the examples of that. And the third one is Fabric has a newer feature called Direct Lake, which means like every time when you are using or kind of creating a table in, in Lake House, the table can be directly accessed by Power BI. It means like you no longer need to kind of import the data and um, kind of cache it at Power BI level. And, and, and at the same time, it provides you the freshness of the data as well as the performance of the data uh, that you have in the lake house. So from Power BI, you can directly access and at the same time, you get the performance of import mode uh, of, of Power BI.
For data integration or data ingestion into lake house, there are different ways you can ingest data into a lake house. Um, if you have a set of files, you can directly upload those data from your local system to the lake house. That's the easiest way to do that for a smaller set of data. Uh, if you have data coming from varieties of different sources, say for example, SQL DB or Oracle DB or any other sources that you have, um, you can use data pipeline um, in, in Fabric to integrate data from different sources into Lake House. That's the second way of doing that. Um, you can use a Spark library, uh, for example, BioDBC or JDBC to connect to different sources and, and, and kind of uh, retrieve the data and ingest into Lake House in, in the code itself, right? So that's the third way of doing that. The fourth way, which is kind of unique to Fabric is about creating a shortcut. So you can think of shortcut as a symbolic link to your original data set. And without moving the data, without copying the data, um, but, but you can access data directly from the source. So for example, if you create a shortcut to uh, a data already there in AWS, you are not copying the data. You are not moving the data AWS when you are creating the shortcut. And using such shortcut, you can access the data which reads the data from your AWS uh, storage account when you kind of run the query uh, on on uh, to access that data. So it's, that shortcut makes it easy. Um, makes it makes it possible to create a data virtualization layer on top of all your data within Fabric outside fabric like Azure Data Lake storage account or AWS storage account. With Lakehouse comes the security. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, is anyone has any question? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, like anyone is unmuted. Maybe. Okay. 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 So let's let's continue. Um, I'm I'm not seeing the chat. So uh, please feel free to unmute and and ask question if you have any question. Um. So yeah, coming back. To, yeah, coming back to Lakehouse, right? So we, we talked about what Lakehouse is and how to ingest data into Lakehouse. The next discussion comes about the security, how secure the data is when we are storing it in the Lakehouse, right? And this is where one lake and one security comes in play. So basically the idea here is once the data lands into Lakehouse, you can define the security policy and irrespective of which engine you are using in Fabric, whether you are using data warehousing with T-SQL or you are using a Spark uh, with data engineering or you are using any other uh, engine in Fabric, that policy that you have defined will be enforced at every layer, right? So if I have been given access to a table, I can access that table from any, any, any engine that Fabric supports. So defining policy at one time and being um, kind of enforced by all the engines in, is the core concept of um, uh, um, one, one security. And this security can be defined to, or, or permission can be uh, given at individual level as well as a, a group level or, or Azure AD level. So this is about defining security and being honored by all the engines. Uh, the next one is about sharing of your lake house, right? So if you have, uh, like in, in, in large organization, there are different departments and uh, they create different lake houses um, uh, for, for their departments, right? So if there is one department which they want to share the data with another department, instead of kind of moving and copying the data, you can share that lake house uh, with the other department that you want uh, to have access on your data. So that is what lake house sharing makes it possible. Uh, with that, it means like anyone who has got access on your lake house will be able to use SQL endpoint again to kind of query the data using SQL statement. And we'll see some examples of that.
So with that, let's let's quickly look at a demo and see how it works. Uh, please let me know if you are not able to hear the sound. Um, hope I have shared it with the audio, so you should be able to. If not, then please let me know. Today, we're going to take a look at how data engineers can leverage Fabric to build out a lake house architecture. In this scenario, I'd like to build a lake house for my organizational marketing data to share with the business. I'm going to start out by creating a new lake house artifact, going to give it a name, and I immediately land in the empty lake house explorer. The lake house is a new experience that combines the power of the lake and warehouse and is a central repository for all fabric data. I have a variety of options to bring data into the lake house. I can simply upload files and folders from my local machine. I can use data flows, which is a low code tool with hundreds of connectors or I can leverage the pipeline copy activity to bring in petabytes of data at scale. Once my marketing data is in the lake house, delta tables are automatically created for me with no additional effort. I can easily explore the tables, see their schema, and even the underlying files. I would also like to add some unstructured customer reviews to accompany my campaign data. Since the data already exists in storage, I can simply point to it with no data movement necessary. To do this, I'm going to add a new shortcut, which allows me to create a virtual table and virtual files inside my lake house. Shortcuts enables me to select from lots of different sources, including lake houses and warehouses and fabric, but also external storage like AD Last Gen 2 and even Amazon S3. Since my customer reviews are actually in S3, all I have to do is select it as a source, specify the data's location, and populate all of my account information. On the next screen, I can give my shortcut a name, and that's it in terms of setup. Within seconds, I can see a shortcut created in the file section, which is the messy unstructured data lake portion of the lake house. I can now explore the data in the lake house and even open up the PDFs, despite the data still physically being in S3. Now that all my data is ready in the lake house, there are many ways for me to use it. As a data engineer or data scientist, I can open up the lake house in a notebook and leverage Spark to continue transforming the data or build a machine learning model. As a SQL professional, I can seamlessly navigate to the SQL endpoint of the lake house, where I can write SQL queries, create views and functions, all on top of the same delta tables. As I write a quick SQL query, I get results back instantly without needing to move any data. Finally, as a business analyst, I can simply navigate to the built-in modeling view and start developing my BI data model directly in the same warehouse experience. After adding relationships and measures to my data, I can generate a Power BI report in a single click. As I build out my report, I get amazing performance thanks to Power BI Direct Lake Mode. With Direct Lake Mode, Power BI can natively read the Parquet Delta format stored in one lake, meaning, again, no data was duplicated in the process. To conclude, in Fabric, data engineers have a frictionless experience building out their enterprise data lake house and can easily democratize this data for all users in the organization. All right, so in the interest of time, let me quickly move on to the next topic. And the second capabilities that we talked about was uh, Apache Spark, the support of Apache Spark. The current runtime that we have in Fabric is uh, runtime 1.1, and this includes Spark version 3.3 and Delta Lake version 2.2. What we have done with, uh, we, we have taken open source Spark to keep it uh, kind of open so that there is no vendor locking, but at the same time, we have optimized it to run in Fabric. And what we have observed is like, it has 20% performance boost compared to the open source um, Spark when we when we do that on TPCDS benchmark. In 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 Fabric, when you use a Delta Lake, it allows you to have one copy of the data, and it it allows you to access the same copy of the data from different experiences. If you go back to the demo that we just had, right? So the table was created in a Spark and, and that same table was accessed using SQL uh, query. So that's that's natively supported and, and built into that. 
There is one additional feature that is kind of uh, being used by all the engines in Fabric is called V-order optimization. So when we write uh, um, Parquet file, uh, when we write data as a Parquet file, the data is kind of compressed and saved into uh, underlying storage file or Parquet file. But what we are doing additionally on top of data on this data is we are using a Microsoft IP here and the concept is called as V-order optimization. And with that, we are optimizing the way the data should get um, uh, sorted and stored and comp compressed and stored into the Parquet file. And that gives a better compression ratio than the open source um, uh, Parquet compression that comes with uh, the open source uh, Parquet file. Uh, with this, with, with this V-order optimization, the, the size of the data that gets written into file is much much smaller than the than the open source parquet uh, file it means it makes the performance much much faster in addition to kind of taking lesser space on the storage account so that's that's a, a feature already built into the platform and all the engines when you are using any of the engines in fabric they use that optimization by default and the, the last here is when you have a set of files, whether it's a CSV or uh, in, in Parquet, uh, you can simply kind of bring that data into Lakehouse and you can, with a click of a button, you can convert that into uh, a Parquet file or, or, or Delta file. So you can say uh, load to table or load to Delta and platform will create a Delta table for you for the files that you have brought in. So that, that feature is currently available. Uh, the next one is performance by default. Given that Microsoft Fabric is based on SaaS foundation, the idea here is to provide the performance by default so that you can focus more on building the solution for your organization than worrying about the uh, different uh, optimization that you have to do. And some of the optimization that, that we have done in the platform and that will keep on growing with, with the time uh, is uh, partition cache, right? So, with this optimization, the pop, we, we have seen that the performance boost on TPCDS benchmark is more than 10%. Cross-join multiple scalar subqueries. So this is another optimization that we have done on top of the open source Spark to kind of improve the performance. But what is interesting here is auto-tune. So auto-tune is a feature which is kind of uh, which is something that you can uh, uh, enable in, in Fabric. And it looks into the query that you are executing and it optimizes or kind of uh, uh, configures session level configuration for, for, for your session so that the subsequent execution of that query is run much, much faster. And some of the challenges, if you if you are a Spark developer, you know that some of the challenges as a developer is how to tune some set of parameters like shuffle partition. So by default, shuffle partition is 200. Uh, in some cases, it might be too large. In other cases, it might be too low. But how do we know that what is the right value for shuffle partition? And this is where auto-tune comes in play. Once you have this feature enabled, it will keep on looking at the query that you are executing and it will set that configuration for you so that your subsequent query execution run much much faster so internally behind the scene we have ai model running uh, and and looking into your query patterns and trying to optimize this configuration so shuffle partition is one of the configuration there is another configuration called broadcast has threshold there is the third configuration called partition size so these are some of the configuration that we have enabled with auto tune so once you kind of go and enable auto tune this this configuration will be automatically tuned for you so that you get performance by default without worrying and kind of looking into how to optimize the performance the next one is a startup time when you start executing your code in fabric or a spark fab uh, spark in fabric your code gets, the very first code gets a start executing almost in a couple of seconds. And this is because, because of that we have a 
a live pool that is pre-wired to your uh, your workspace and it creates a session immediately for you and it starts executing your code so you no longer have to wait for a couple of minutes for your cluster to set up and sessions to get created so the moment that you start executing your code your session is ready in a couple of seconds and subsequent execution is going to happen on the same session so that's going to be almost instantaneously the good part here is even the, even when we are keeping those hardware resources or um, cluster live uh, in, in the background, you as a customer, you don't have to worry about the cost of keeping those systems live. Microsoft takes care of that. You as a customer pay for those resources only when you are executing your code or when you are actually using those live sessions. So that's, that's about a starter pool or live pool. What we have additionally done on top of that is we have introduced a concept of high concurrency mode. So it means like if you have a session already kind of created or a spa underlying a Spark cluster already created, you can have multiple notebook executed on the same set, work, set of resources. That is going to optimize the utilization of your hardware resources as well as optimize the cost that you are going to pay for um, running your workload in, in Fabric. So this high concurrency mode is another feature that's available here and that with that you can execute multiple set of notebook in parallel on the same set of underlying resources. So this uh, session sharing is, is possible across multiple notebooks. And once you have your session um, or kind of full session created on this uh, high concurrency cluster, you can attach another notebook and creating another session for the second and subsequent notebook is very, very fast. It takes less than five seconds to kind of uh, uh, start executing your second notebook. So that's 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 optimizes performance significantly. Uh, this high concurrency is currently in um, available in notebook, but that's going to be soon available for pipelines as well. So when you're executing your notebooks from pipeline, you can use high concurrency cluster in that case as well. Uh, for the admin settings, um, you can define a different configuration uh, for the Spark. Uh, like the idea here is to provide out of box performance and capabilities that you as a de uh, data developer or data engineer need. But at the same time, we want to make sure that you have all the controls that you need to kind of uh, control different aspects of this runtime, right? So you can control, so we have a starter pool, uh, but if you need to create a pool which is kind of custom for your specific situation, you can create a custom pool. Uh, in that case, you can define the number of um, uh, node that you want to have, the size of the node and all those things. So this is possible. And, and we'll see the ex uh, demo for that. Uh, the second one is like, uh, even though Spark comes with lots of most frequently used libraries in in um, in big data world and we have included additional libraries which are kind of most frequently used by our uh, customers there are times when you have to bring your own library your own custom library or maybe you have to bring a library from pypy or conda so that's where library management in spark in Fabric helps you to do that. You can you can install libraries at the workspace level where all the notebook will be able to use the uh, library across, or you can install library in each of the session with um, pip or conda. So that, that's possible. You can also define policy as, as a, a workspace admin, you can define a policy so that every developers and engineers in, in the organization is kind of following that or adhering to that policy. So that policy definition um, is, is also a feature that's, that's uh, going to be available as part of the admin control that we are going to provide. The next one is environment. So environment is, uh, so as a developer, you might have uh, uh, different notebooks in a single workspace and not all the notebooks need 
to execute in a same way. You need to have some notebook running on a starter pool, some notebooks running on your custom pool, maybe some smaller jobs you want to run it on a spark, uh, uh, starter pool, some um, long running jobs you want to run it in a custom pool, uh, or you have uh, a different environment like dev, test and prod. Uh, this is where environment uh, artifacts can help you. So the, basically the idea here is you can associate a notebook to an environment variable and based on the in configuration that you have defined uh, or the specific settings that you have for that environment artifact, that will be applicable for the notebook that has been associated to it, right? So that way you can have a single workspace and in that single workspace, you might have multiple notebook each of them is associated to different environment and each in and, and 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 that association actually helps them to kind of inherit the configuration from the environment and run it in a single workspace differently so this is this is something coming soon so with that let's look at the demo for this let's take a look at how an administrator can configure a spark environment for their data engineers I'm starting out in the Capacity Admin Portal, where I can now access the Spark Compute settings for data engineers and data scientists. Opening up the Spark Compute option, I can set a default runtime and default Spark properties. I can also turn on the ability for workspace admins to configure their own custom Spark pools. I'm now going to navigate to the Marketing Workspace, which I'm getting ready for my data engineers. The workspace comes pre-wired with a default Spark pool that all notebooks and Spark jobs inherit from. We can view and modify this pool by navigating to the workspace settings and drilling into the data engineering and data science tab. Here I can modify things like the default libraries that come with the workspace. For example, I can search for the word cloud library and choose the version that I want. I can also add libraries from Conda and from YAML files or upload custom ones directly. Navigating to the Spark Compute settings, I can see that my workspace automatically comes with a default starter pool and have full transparency of all the pool details. Without needing to set anything up, all notebooks and Spark jobs can leverage the starter pool to run their jobs. In this case, I would actually like to run some small test workloads, and so I'm going to create a new default pool. I'm going to give the pool a name and select a small node size and turn auto scale off. I can now set my Spark pool to always run with a single node for my test workloads. Finally, I'm going to reduce my executor upper limit and create the pool. Our workspace admin also has the ability to change the default runtime and modify Spark properties. Now that everything has been set up, I can save my workspace settings. Any notebooks I create will now automatically use a single node Spark along with the selected runtime, libraries, and Spark properties. Now for developer experience, uh, Fabric includes a delightful and immersive authoring experience with Notebook. Notebook includes different capabilities like it has native integration with Lakehouse, so you don't have to kind of uh, switch in back and forth. You, you can directly access the default Lakehouse from, uh, from the Notebook itself. It has real-time collaboration and commenting capabilities so that you can see who all are working on that single notebook and you can collaborate and comment on the code that um, uh, note you are writing in the notebook. Uh, it has auto-save support. So basically anytime you are writing code that is getting saved automatically. Uh, so in case something happens to your browser and you come back again, your code is not lost. So that, that support is already there. For a notebook, you can have a lightweight scheduling and, and uh, integrate that notebook in a pipeline. So if you have a notebook, uh, you can directly schedule it to run on certain frequency, frequency or you can create an activity in the pipeline and, and call that notebook or execute that notebook from the pipeline itself. Um, I talked about library management. You can install libraries at workspace level as well as in the notebook or at the system level itself, right? So that support is also there. From a notebook, you can start executing uh, another notebook. So you can have notebook chaining where you have a master node and that's that's coming uh, calling different child nodes from, from that master notebook. So that's, that's possible. 
Uh, there is another feature that we recently rolled out is called notebook, uh, uh, kind of, uh, notebook uh, resource folder. And with that, you can include all the files that you want to be included as part of the notebook. So if you have a set of uh, uh, um, frequently used function, which you want to use across multiple um, notebook, you can create a PI file for, um, for all those functions and reference those and include that as a resource file into notebook and that's going to be available in your notebook for quick and easy access to that. Uh, in every notebook, notebook monitoring is uh, kind of uh, built into the system itself. And what it additionally does is it has included a, a feature called a Spark uh, Advisor, which keeps on looking into the code that you are executing and provides you guidance in terms of the kind of error that you are encountering. Uh, it, it, it provides you prescriptive guidance in terms of what is the root of that error and how you can solve that error um, uh, to resolve it. So those those kind of things we, is already built into the platform. Uh, you can see the job getting executed uh, when you kick off any action on um, in your notebook uh, in, in line uh, uh, with the notebook itself, as you can see on the screen, as well as you can get this additional information to tune and optimize your code. Data Wrangler is uh, a capability for um, your um, citizen developer. So there are times when you want to kind of transform your data, uh, but some of your employees may, might not have um, coding skill. So they, they have a data set which they want to kind of transform. For example, they want to remove duplicates, they want to join two tables, or they want to kind of uh, filter some data, those kind of operations they want to perform. Uh, so what we are doing here with Data Wrangler and, and there is another capabilities called Data Flow Gen 2, which allows you to transform your data with the UI. And with Data Wrangler, you would get the code that gets generated for the operation that you are performing in the UI. So basically you, through the UI, you perform all the operation, for example, filtering or, or sorting and all those things grouping and all those things and the equivalent codes gets generated which you can take it and include it in your notebook for uh, quick development so this is a feature which is kind of currently available and you can make use of it uh, for data exploration right so every notebook has this built-in uh, built-in rich, rich data frame and visualization for um, data exploration uh, and then we'll see that in um, a demo given the time uh, that we have let with let me quickly jump out to the next one and we'll look at the demo uh, in real time how it works uh, with the copilot integration you can accelerate your productivity and with this copilot integration this is again going to be natively integrated it's not currently available but it's going to come very soon and going to be natively natively integrated so with the scopilot integration there are a couple of capability that comes in uh, automatically you can scan through or, or you can take help of copilot to scan through your code and generate documentation for your code so that's number one thing number two is you can specify the kind of transformation that you want to apply on your data and it's going to generate the code for you to do that transformation and that it does on your own data so basically it it it's 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 going to preserve or look into the context that you are working on and based on that context it's going to generate the data for your specific scenario so that's something going to be available with copilot integration Notebook in an app is another capabilities where you can embed a notebook in a Power BI uh, so that you can share or, or you can you can use that to share a story um, uh, to to your business users. So I will will see that again in action. Let me quickly jump into the demo and we'll go through that. 
In this demo, we'll dive deeper into a data developer's authoring experience in Microsoft Fabric. In this project, I'm collaborating with my colleagues on a predictive model built on top of the marketing data in the lakehouse. I can see Pira has the notebook open, and I can view his code updates in real time inside the cell. To get started, I'm going to install an ML library I need for my project. Thanks to the built-in live pools, my Spark session starts in a matter of seconds, and I can immediately start being productive. I can now drag and drop my campaign table from my lake house, and a code snippet gets generated for me immediately. As I run my cell, I can leverage the inline monitoring to monitor my Spark job and make sure everything is running smoothly. I can get a preview of my data and use the built-in charting capabilities to explore things and even adjust the charts around for better insights. Next, I can use the display summary function to get a quick overview of the quality of my data, looking at data types, missing values, and summary statistics. I can now leverage Spark to do some additional data cleansing, for example, getting rid of the missing values. Users can also use custom libraries to explore their data further. In this case, we'll plot some box plots to look at data distributions of call durations, broken out by job types and campaign outcomes. The notebook has a built-in resource folder, which makes it easy to store scripts or other code files I might need for the project. I'm going to drag and drop the top feature selector Python script that my colleague created, and I can get a quick overview of the functions it supports. I can now use the top feature selector function to identify the most important features for my model. I can leave my colleagues a comment to the notebook cell, letting them know about my progress. All this time, my notebook is getting auto-saved without any involvement needed from me. I'm now ready to train my machine learning model. After some experimentation with a variety of different model types, I decide to use a logistic regression for this project. Finally, I can plot an ROC curve to evaluate my model's performance, and I can easily store it as an image in my notebook resource folder, so that my colleagues can easily check it out as well. To conclude, Fabric provides me with a rich developer experience, enabling users to collaborate, easily work with their lakehouse data, and leverage the power of Spark. So in the interest of time, we'll keep moving. Um, so the next topic that we wanted to talk about is VS Code integration. So as a developer experience, we saw the notebook and how you can use that notebook for your um, delightful authoring experience. But there are times when, as a developer, you need to develop those those code from your local ID. And this is where VS Code integration can help you. So with this weird VS Code integration, you can navigate through, once you are connected to your workspace, you can navigate through all the items in your workspace, like notebooks, Spark job, and Lakehouse, and run and debug code directly in VS Code while connecting to your remote workspace. Uh, it, it has flexibility to work offline with your local environment and push your changes online when needed or when you are done. There are a couple of other capabilities that's coming, uh, but the core capabilities of connecting to your workspace, browsing through or navigating through that workspace item is currently available and you can make use of it. The next one is Spark job definition. So there are times when you have a Spark job already and you want to bring that Spark job and run it here in Fabric. This is where your, um, this is where a Spark job definition can help in. Uh, this also allows you to kind of, uh, along with the job that you are bringing, there might be some reference file or, or configuration file that you want to kind of bring in here. Um, you can bring all those pieces together here and, and schedule it as, as and when you want to execute this. So when you create a Spark job definition, you can run it on demand or you can schedule it to run on certain frequency that, that's applicable in your case. So that's, that's an, um, the, the third capabilities that we have for developers. So with that, let's quick ha quickly have a look on the VS Code integration. As a data engineer, I want to work with some of the marketing data in my lake house. Since I prefer working in IDEs, I can make use of the native notebook VS Code integration and open the IDE in a single click. I'm instantly navigated to VS Code and prompted about opening up the Synapse VS Code extension. My marketing notebook is automatically downloaded, opened up, and ready to use. 
I can easily browse all the notebooks, spark jobs, and lake houses in my workspace and interact with the notebook I was previously working on in the browser. I have the option of working with my notebook locally, or I can easily connect the remote Spark cluster in Fabric to leverage the Spark pools I'm already using in the service. I can now start my work in VS Code and run my notebook cells to continue iterating on my project and can seamlessly see the output of my run. In this next step, I can add a breakpoint to my code and leverage all the great debugging capabilities of VS Code for my project. As I debug the cell and hit the breakpoint, I can work with my notebooks just like any other regular local Java or c -sharp script. When I hit the next breakpoint, I can inspect my data frame object in the local call stack on the side and see all the columns, data types, schemas, and more. I can also, of course, keep working in the notebook and adding my own code cells. In this case, let's go ahead and save our cleansed data as a new table in the lake house. In the workspace view, we can navigate through the lake houses available, expand out the marketing lake house, and see all the tables we're able to work with. I'm going to run the code cell, and after it's done, let's refresh the workspace view. We can immediately see the new cleanse campaign table appear as a new table in the marketing lake house. Now that I'm done making my changes, I can choose to publish my updated notebook to Fabric. Navigating back to the notebook, let's refresh the browser, and we can see the new table appear in our lake house editor, whilst the notebook has been updated with the latest code changes. In Fabric, we strive to give data developers the flexibility to work in any tool that meets your needs whether it's our notebooks, VS Code, or a completely external ID. All right, so we have five minutes, so let's quickly um, look into the fourth pillar, uh, and this is about unified analytics platform. So all these capabilities that we just talked about is natively integrated into Fabric ecosystem. Uh, this is a block diagram that you'll see um, um, when you kind of go through Fabric. And what you see here is the intelligent data foundation that we have at the bottom and the core capabilities built on top of it and shared across all the engines. The idea here is to provide single onboarding and trial experience or single sign-on experience, single security uh, uh, model so that you don't have to kind of uh, hop through different engines and define it at multiple locations. Uh, enterprise information management capabilities is something that you, you might be already aware of. And the idea here is to apply sensitivity level to your artifacts, uh, uh, like notebook or lake house. And that, uh, that sensitivity levels kind of trans is, is kind of uh, a pass through when you are sharing, sharing the notebook or, or sharing the um, uh, lake house. Right. So that's that's the definition that you can define to protect the confidentiality of your data. What is also additionally uh, available with this is the lineage, right? So when you read the data from a lake house, transform it the notebook and move into a different lake house or 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 have the capabilities like that, all those lineages things are being captured automatically for you and you can see all those details by going to lineage view of your workspace and this is what you see on the screen so all these capabilities are already built into the platform the next one is CICD so continuous integration and continuous development is one area uh, which is kind of uh, of of if import importance for uh, developers and this is something going to be again uh, built into the platform itself um, so that you 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 take advantage of the native capability so the 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 idea here is you connect your workspace to azure devops and commit all your changes notebook and everything to the uh, devops um uh, for for continuous integration and for continuous deployment you can use data pipelines or data deployment pipeline uh, to deploy your artifacts from one environment to other environment so part of this feature is already available uh, although this this slides is coming soon uh, but the the current state is part of this capabilities is already available you can connect your workspace to um 
to to uh, Azure DevOps and you have all your uh, notebooks getting committed to the DevOps or GitHub repo in DevOps, um, the de deployment pipeline is the capability that's coming soon. So you'll have whole set of capabilities that you need for dev setting up your DevOps uh, process. Uh, we, we talked about the Spark monitoring in Notebook. Uh, while that's that's one option you have to kind of uh, look at um, the the code you are executing and monitor the experience, monitor, monitor the execution of your code uh, in line in the Notebook. There are times when you, as, a, as an admin, or you want to monitor or look into the logs coming from all the execution that's happening in, in, in Fabric. And this is where you can go to a monitoring hub. So this is one place which capture, captures all the execution that's happening in um, your Fabric experience and you'll, you'll be able to see all the details there uh, at one place. Uh, that also means like for a Spark workload, it has integration with a Spark UI and history server. So any job that you are executing, if you want to look at the Spark UI, the open source Spark UI, you can um, get to that from here and look into all those details. Capacity metrics reporting is, is another feature that's currently available. And the idea here is any workload or anything that you are executing in Fabric, you want to know what level of resource utilization that job is taking or notebook execution is taking. This is where capacity metrics reporting can help in, right? So this is one app that you can install and look into all the execution that's happening and the resources that's uh, being consumed by uh, each of those notebook or job definition and all those things. So that's that's currently available. And finally, um, the Fabric SDK, right? So as a developer, there are times when you need to programmatically manage and execute jobs uh, from your application. And, and that is where you need SDK or you need access to REST API. This this capability is something coming up uh, and I'm going to be available soon. Uh, with that, let's quickly look at our last demo and then we can wrap up the day. Now we'll take a look at how Fabric provides a unified experience for monitoring, whilst giving users the flexibility of diving deeper into their workload specific needs. I start out by navigating to the monitoring hub, which is a centralized monitoring portal for all Fabric items. Users can sort by item type, filter by job status, get more details about a job, and the great part is this experience is completely consistent for every item, whether it's a data engineering notebook, a data integration data flow, or a Power BI data set. If there's a job I submitted by accident or I don't want to run anymore, I can also easily cancel the run straight from this experience. Whilst the monitoring hub provides me with a consistent way of looking at all my jobs, I can also drill into the details of all my runs, for example, navigating into a specific Spark application. At this point, the experience transforms into something that is personalized for my specific workload. In this case, a data engineer can get all the details of the Spark jobs that are part of their Spark application. If I have a job that has failed, I can easily get the specific code cell snippet of where the problem has occurred. I can also navigate through the diagnostic panel to get more details about where and why the error occurred, but also warnings about potential performance issues. In this case, we can see we have some skewness in the data that the user should look into. Data engineers can also look through the driver logs to get more details about the error. They can also download the logs for further analysis in their own tool of choice. Users can also see the data inputs and outputs, for example, coming from their lake house, blob storage, and other sources. Finally, data engineers can take a look at the notebook snapshot from their run to see exactly where potential issues occurred. For a more scoped view, users can navigate to their workspace and look at the runs associated with a specific item, such as the notebook. And of course, users can monitor their interactive jobs directly in line. Data engineers are also able to navigate to the Spark UI, which shows native Spark execution metrics at the job level. 
Users can dig into the different executors and check out the corresponding logs. To conclude, Fabric offers many unified experiences ranging from CI-CD to monitoring, where users can benefit from a consistent interface, but can also dive into the workload-specific details if needed. All right. Uh, with that, I think we are at the end of the uh, um, kind of uh, demo and, and session. And thank you so much for resting a couple of minutes over our time. Um, back to you, Go Oscar. Yeah. So, participants, uh, you are in unmute. So, you can, if you have any questions or questions, you can ask. Or if you don't have question at this point of time, you can uh, simply send the uh, message to our Telegram channel, or you can ping the Oscar directly on LinkedIn. We'll pass that message to us, sir. Uh, uh, the certificate link has been already shared by Gavaskar. You can you know, uh, go to tutaya.com and get the certificate uh, for the same. So participants, you can uh, find the certificate link and the secret code for downloading the certificate in the chat. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. So um, the existing uh, uses like this uh, Vika adapter, the snaps and index and looking on data card and stuff and all. So if we are having plan to move to as a family, uh, is there any uh, Best practices or any links to uh, do the migration approach, anything? Yeah, that's a very good topic. Uh, yes, uh, for now, uh, I, I think there is not much, uh, but what we are doing is um, there are a couple of people in my team, like we are working on creating this best practices, especially around migration. And you can expect to see that coming in next couple of weeks to couple of months time. So it's not there, uh, but you, you will have those. So depending on the source that you are coming from or um, uh, whatever your existing platform is, uh, we are coming up with the migration story for that. So you'll have um, information being available in coming months. Anyone else has any question? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Participants, uh, any more questions? Or you can share our questions in our Telegram channel. So already uh, the link for downloading the certificates as well as the uh, Secret code is uh, provided in the chat. Thank you. And uh, recording will be available within you know uh, one one or two days. Uh, see many people who didn't join uh, prefer to watch the recording. Uh, so we'll uh, try to clean it up and upload on the same link where you are getting the certificate uh, for the further recording. The course has also been set up for Microsoft Fabric. Uh, uh, through the course, you can go on the fiftair.com slash courses and check for Microsoft every course where all these sessions are listed. Uh, thank you, Asad, uh, for giving our time on Sunday. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye.